Mondays with Mooch. Indeed, it's now time to chat with Steve Mariucci, as we always do at Mooch Cam. For those who are watching on TV, on radio, he is sitting in his office in Northern California after hanging with me on game day morning yesterday and with the rest of the crew on NFL Network. Uh, Steve, what is Joe Philbin feeling right now? You have been in this position of being let go in the middle of a season <laughs> in your career back in Detroit back in that day. Well, um, I mean, if he's feeling anything like I did, you feel... Um, you feel obviously disappointed. You feel you have thoughts that you that you disappointed people, that you failed. I mean, let's face it, we're human, right? You feel like you failed, and you let people down. And and um, geez, it's it's not easy on the coach. Certainly, Rich, not easy on the family, wives, kids, parents, all of that. They feel the pain as well, and so. But we all know that it's a possibility when you when you sign on the dotted line that you know it's not permanent. You're not there forever. It's not a real long marriage. It's, you're dating, okay, and you, you're only going to be there for X amount of years. It's just tough when it happens, especially during the season. Geez, after four games, you know, I got let go after Thanksgiving. But uh, I had 25 people in my house. That was a bummer. But uh, uh, it's just hard. Joe Fieldman's a good man. He's a good coach. Didn't work out. You know, sometimes we forget, Rich, mm -hmm. when he took that job, remember this, when he left the Packers and they were very successful, he had a, a tragic incident at, at, in his family when he lost son. his son, 21-year-old yeah. son, fell through the ice in Green Bay. That's how he got started over there in Miami. So, but, it, you know, it's a, it's a tough thing. Heck, when I got fired, I didn't leave the house for a month. Is that right? You didn't leave the house for a month? Oh, yeah. No, I didn't go anywhere. I, I stayed in the house for a month. You know, you know, first time, Eric called me, all right? Eric Weinberg, he called me up. He said, Mooch, you want to do the Super Bowl in Detroit? I got fired from Detroit. He goes, you want to do the Super Bowl in Detroit? I went, what? He goes, the Super Bowl's in Detroit. You just go right to the stadium and do the Super Bowl. Yeah, with for us, us with said, NFL Network, I Eric, remember that. I, have, I haven't left the house yet. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you need to get out of the house. You need to do something. Get out, and you got to get on with your life. You, you just feel you feel very disappointed and very uh, borderline depressed, yeah. Yeah, well, obviously it's our gain, uh, the Lions' loss back in that day. What is it? What, what do you think is going on with the assistants that are left behind that he hired to bring in <laughs> are, and are either going to be kept to continue to do a job for the new guy, and if it works out, it would prove in many ways that it, it, it might have been the guy at the very top. I mean, what, what's... What are the emotions right now of the assistants in, in Miami, Steve? Well, they and their families right now know they are on the, you know, they are on the bubble, so to speak, and they're going to find out who's going to take over. Is it going to be Dan Campbell, and how's he going to be? None of them have had a head coaching experience. These, these kind of interim coaching deals, they, they, they seldom work, but I think it's the ownership's way of saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to light a fire under this team and everybody's going to take notice in this organization that, hey, if I can fire the head coach in the middle of the year, then the assistants better do a better job, the players, the everybody, the ushers in the stadium, everybody better do a better job or heads are going to roll. And I think it's kind of a wake-up call. It doesn't, it doesn't mean they're going to play better. It doesn't mean they're going to – they might. They might try to save their neck. You know what I mean? But we'll see. We'll see. Steve Mariucci. I, I, just, uh, I yeah. know it's reality, but I feel bad for him. Of course. Steve Mariucci joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. And then there's a, a new head coach like Jim Tom Sula with all the players that left in mm. the, uh, the offseason, <clears throat> retired or, or, or uh, you know, that uh, got traded away. And then we all know Harbaugh's not there. But Kaepernick is regressing. He looks dreadful, Steve. There's no other way to put it. Um, is there a possibility that, that Kaepernick can be benched? Should Tom Sula bench Colin Kaepernick, Steve? I don't think so. Um, you know, he was just awarded this new contract. It's one of those $100 million contracts that's not quite $100 million. It's not, you know, it's more back-end loaded. But, you know, so they could make a move next year if they wanted to. But they don't want to. They, they've, hey, the 49ers beat the Green Bay Packers the last four times they've played, okay? Mm -hmm. Kaepernick threw for 412 yards one time. He ran for 181 one time. So what's happened but to him, Steve? You're right. I, what, what's happened to I him? I agree. This year, he's deer in the headlights a little bit. I'm blaming Kurt Warner. Nice. Okay? Right. And so, <laughs> nice. No. Hey, when I, when I was dr flying down on the uh, airplane Saturday morning to, you know, or to see you guys, mm -hmm. 
the headlines in the paper up here said something about Kurt Warner. Mm -hmm. And it was like, <laughs> now Kurt Warner knows what it's like to coach in the National Football League. Right. Just sling it. But coach, because he's getting blamed for Kaepernick's. Just because he tried know, to help but, the kid in the, in the offseason. Try to help him. But, I mean, it, it, how much does management <laughs> Uh, ownership play a role in, in whether a quarterback stays or not? Because you see it, what's going on in Washington, the RG3 still inactive, just sitting there. Uh, do you yeah. think there's a role in ownership with Kaepernick up there in San Francisco? Yeah, yes, it is. Because it's about the dollars, okay? Mm -hmm. It's about this huge commitment financially and how it would impact your team um, if he's no longer there. Because when a guy signs a big signing bonus, okay, mm -hmm. it's spread and prorated over the life of a contract. Well, if you trade or cut that guy, right, mm -hmm. all of that gets accelerated to this year, and it's a hit. It's a salary cap hit. So you might have to cut some other guys too. And so you, you know, you're you throwing out the baby with the bathwater sometimes if you do that. But cap has got to get back on track you know, I, I'm looking at his body language during the game. I don't see him smiling and, and, and fired up. I see him down in the dumps. His body language is telling me that ha doubt has crept in, maybe not with himself, but the team's ability to be productive and win. And he knows his defense isn't as good as it's been. Right, I know. Been great and over he, the last five years. And his yeah. next game is on Sunday night football for the whole country to see what's going on. Um, with the Chip Kelly's offense to me right now, it, it appears to be completely out of sync still. He keeps talking about the, there's a problem with execution. There's no other problem. Isn't the problem the fact that, forget about DeMarco Murray and how they're mm -hmm. using him, which is positively uh, off, off kilter in my mind. The fact that, no, that, that Sam Bradford, it, I thought this offense needs to be run by a quarterback that can at least threaten to run. And there's no threat for Sam Bradford to run. Is that the ultimate issue with this offense when it all comes down to it that in this quarterback-driven league, Steve? That's one issue, though, Rich. And just like we're talking about Kaepernick, uh, he being the issue, it's more than that. Or Tannehill, it's more than that. And Bradford, it's more than that. Now, I agree. If I'm, if I'm calling plays with Sam Bradford, I'm, I don't want that guy running. He's had knee surgeries already. I don't want him to take any more hits. And part of Chip Kelly's offensive threat is the is that zone read and the ability to throw or to hand it off or even to run as a quarterback that doesn't seem to exist anymore but you know Sam Bradford too uh, you look at him he doesn't look fired up about this offense to me either he doesn't look mm. confident in it and their run game is is atrocious all right but part of that is because they got rid of a couple of linemen you know, Harriman's and Evan Mathis, and now another guard gets hurt. Their offensive line isn't worth a darn right now, so they can't run the ball like they did with LaShawn McCoy. So that means the quarterback has got to carry the load, and he's not that guy yet. Remember when Nick Foles threw for 27 touchdowns and yes. two interceptions? Yes. And that wasn't good enough. I mean, well, I thought he was going to be the next elite quarterback after that season, and where is he now? He traded him away. I know. In St. Louis with Todd Gurley looking like a, a beast uh, uh, Ooh, in, 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 on the Gurley. vine right now. Last question for you. What makes Mooch mad this week? Mm. W, uh, what makes Mooch most mad? W, M, M, M. You like this. I do like this. I do. What makes Mooch most mad? You like mad? this segment. Which yeah. Make, yeah. You know, I'm, I, I don't get mad very often. But I'll tell you what gets me mad, Rich. Yes, Steve. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm watching these games, and these kickers now have missed 18 field goals and yeah, extra points. Yeah, what's up with that? Yeah, ties a world record, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with these guys. I don't think they're people anymore. And so, but here's what makes me mad. When, when coaches feel it, an obligation yes. to call a timeout to freeze these guys, are you kidding me? It seems to me that we should have a rule that says, all right, you can call your timeout. If you got, if you got one, you got to take it. But you got to take it before a guy kicks it. Mm -hmm. Because kickers are told, kickers are told, all right, let's go kick it, mm -hmm. and don't worry about timeouts. Let's go get a free swipe at it. Mm -hmm. You can check the wind. You can check the distance. You can check your angle. So kickers are kicking it, whether mm -hmm. the timeout comes or not. All so right? you, you mean you and never tried? Sudden, you, you said you've never, you've never tried to ice a kicker like that, Steve, before? Are you yeah, here's that? another reason why it just brings back bad memories. Oh, I tried cool. it one time. Right? Yeah, what happened? So I'm with Detroit, uh -huh. and nothing good happened in Detroit. <laughs> I shouldn't say nothing. <laughs> Some things did, but this is what when you're with a bad team, everything goes against you. It just right. does. So we're in Dallas right before the half, and Ed Hockley was rough. 
So right before the half, and Dallas is trying to kick a 54-yard field goal or right. something. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm getting ready to do this, <laughs> the obligatory timeout freeze, yes. all right? Yeah. So so here they get, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I, w- I don't want them to get set, and the kicker's right there. So I'm going, Time out. And the official was standing in front of me, but he had his back to me. He was ignoring me. And I, time out. Time out. Ba-boom. He kicks it. Good. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Time's out. They run off the field. And now I'm in this guy's face. I was calling time out. You didn't give it me time out. Uh-huh. So now he goes, I didn't see it, coach. And so now I'm running after Ed Hockley. <laughs> and? And Ed, I, and you know where Ed is. He's the guy with the guns, yeah, right? exactly. And so I'm finding Ed Hockley, and I'm, I'm mad because he didn't give me the timeout. I mean, here's the lowly lions. Just give us a timeout, will and, you? Right. And so he go, and he goes, come in the locker room. Come in the locker room, and we'll talk about it then. I go, too late in the locker room. I want to re-kick right now, and I didn't get it. So that's why I hate that timeout. You sure he didn't tell you you weren't old enough to get the call, Steve? I, I probably well. Let's see. That was the end of my career. That probably the year I got whacked right at Thanksgiving. But, Rich, we got another minute. I got a better kicker story than that. Uh, uh, that yeah, sure. Go for it. We got one more minute. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, got, we got yeah exactly. go for it here. Yeah. So look. Yeah. What, so did I ever show you this? You're holding. You know up, who that is? You're holding up a picture of number ten throwing it in black and white. Is that from high That's school? That's me. That's me in high school, uh-huh. and that guy there is Izzo in high school. Okay? Izzo is Izzo so, blocking wow. for you? Is your alignment? Yeah, he was a running back, so he would block. He wasn't very good, but he was blocked, all right? <laughs> so I was the kicker. Yeah, <laughs> you were? I was also the kicker. Yeah. I was a straight-on kicker. And? Oh, yeah, punt returner, kick returner. You were like Mosley? everything. You were Chalk the Mosley the of Iron Mountain, Michigan? You were the Mark Mosley straight-on kicker? Izzo and I were the captains. Rich, yeah. we were the captains. We lost every coin flip. We were 0 for 9 that day. <laughs> Ask Del Tufo what the odds are of, of that. <laughs> I, we're not. But, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So listen, I'm the kicker. I'm lining up right before halftime, uh-huh. right before halftime against Menominee, all right? <laughs> and, and I'm going to kick this little field goal. And, the, you know, right before halftime, the band is lining up, mm-hmm. right? They line up in the end zone so they can do their thing, uh-huh. right? Yeah. So I, boom, I shanked it. Zoom, it stuck right in the tuba. <laughs> That's a true story. Yep. Mooch, I got to run. Thanks, brother. We'll, see it. we'll chat soon. You're going to be here in person Thursday, right? You're going to come here Thursday to the studio, right? In person, yeah. With the attire. Uh, what, just how you're dressed. <laughs> Don't worry. Casual. It's all good. Come as you are. That's uh, Steve Mariucci. We're back in a minute's time. Of, he That's actually fantastic. kicked a ball into a tuba. <laughs> the Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.